Hello and welcome to this tutorial on controls for the GP2 multifunction program. This tutorial is from the series Introduction to the GP2 Program Editor. In this tutorial I'll be giving you an overview of controls, how to set up the outputs, conditions and scheduling, what safety conditions are and also talk about the feature record while active. Okay so this tutorial is based on the previous tutorial of recordings and um, builds on the program that was created there. Uh, if you've jumped straight into this tutorial you'll need to load up the tutorial from the samples folder and I'll show you how to do that right now. So we'll go to the start to the program window. We're going to change the program, click edit and import the program. This is where you're going to go navigate to your program files folder and the installation folder of Delta Link. Under the samples folder you'll see a GPT multifunction program and select recordings from that menu. It'll then import the program as you just saw a moment ago. So controls are intended for switching an external actuator through the relays. So typical uses of this include regulating soil moisture or temperature by controlling pumps, valves, heaters, vents or anything else that you could think of. If it can be controlled by a relay then you can do it with the GP2. Controls switch the logger's relays according to the evaluation of a condition. Conditions are logical expression normally calculated from measurements. For example, is soil moisture greater than 29% and is the temperature less than 32.5 degrees? If that evaluated as true, then the control would activate. And similarly, there is a deactivate condition for when the control is already active. So we're going to work in the controls list. So I'm going to minimize the info panel to give us some more space and scroll down. Okay, so before we create our control, we need to decide under what conditions we want the relay to be activated. To do that, the best thing to do is to go and look at the actual data and decide on the dis where the decision point is. So let's apply our program, go into the logger tab, and before we start the simulator, I'd like to point out a feature of the simulator, and that is the restart button. For purposes like this where you are creating a program, it is often useful to be able to see the same time period or the same data going through and then you change your program and see how it affects that same time period. And to do that you click the restart button and you'll see that it resets itself to 0 o'clock on the 1st of the 3rd 2013. So I'll be doing that every time we update the program and rerun the, the simulator. So let's start that logging and let's go and have a look at some data. Okay, so we have some sensible data over here. If we have a look at the soil moisture, we'll note that it sort of ranges between 25 and 40 odd percent soil moisture. So let's say for the purpose of this tutorial, we don't want the soil moisture to go, low, go below 30 percent. So that's our aim. So let's go and edit the program. Let's stop, delete records so that we can edit and go to the program. So if we scroll down to the control section, we simply click the row to add new control. Let's give it a sensible name. So the first item in the list here that we need to define is the output channel. This basically defines the physical relay on the GP2 board that gets activated. In this case we're going to use relay 1. Optionally you can decide to pulse the relay by enabling the next property and that then expands a couple of other properties that allow you to define the duty cycle but we're not going to do that. Next you can see two property categories, one's activate and one's deactivate. These define the conditions under which the control gets activated and deactivated and additional to that you can define how the evaluation of your condition is scheduled. So let's go ahead and define that condition we were considering earlier. To do that we click the three buttons. This brings up what is called a condition editor. It, it's pre-populated with a default condition just to indicate, to give us a bit of a hint what to do. The way you use this editor is you move the mouse over the text that is in there and you'll see that you get little blue rectangles that follow your mouse. These basically indicate which elements in this, um, in this condition that we can edit. So we want to put in a measurement and we want to say is the measurement less than 30%. So we select the box and you'll notice a whole load of buttons become available. That indicates to you which buttons are valid for the current selection. We're simply going to choose 
average SM150 from the measurement button. We want the comparator to be less than, so let's change the operator to less. And then if we click on the last field, we've defined what soil moisture is our threshold, and we said 30%. So the condition reads, is the average soil moisture less than 30%? So that defines our activate condition. We'll apply that. Then the scheduling of that condition um, is okay as it is because soil moisture does not change very quickly. So if it were evaluated once an hour, that seems like a sensible rate. Once the control becomes active and it is now irrigating, we need to tell it when to deactivate. And that is defined in the deactive property category. So let's go ahead and define that. And the way we, let's say, so a sensible point at which to turn off the relay is if the soil moisture has gone up by a certain amount. So let's say, is the soil moisture bigger than let's say 32%. We click apply. Now, when it's irrigating, your soil moisture is going to be changing a lot faster than it did for the activate condition. So let's increase the rate at which it tests to something a bit more sensible. Let's call it once every 30 seconds. Okay, so before we actually go and apply that program, as previously mentioned in one of the other tutorials, the simulator has a specific naming convention whereby we tell it what to do in this case with the relay. At the moment it doesn't know that we need that we want this relay to be an irrigation relay. So I recommend you go and look at the simulator's help for information on the naming convention and how to program it. But in this case I know that it needs to contain the IRI keyword so we'll call our relay irrigation relay. So now we can apply that. Go to the logger tab. I'm going to restart the simulator so that we get the same date period. And I'll start logging. So I'll now briefly speed up the simulator so that we get some data over a longer period. That should do it. Click refresh and there you go we have a whole load of data. So now if we go and look at the average soil moisture over here which we can expand you'll notice that the soil moisture really goes below 30 percent and that is thanks to our irrigation. If we try and line this up with the, with the relays you'll notice that every time there's a little spike there's a relay event. So the irrigation is kicking in. Interesting over here, the soil moisture is going up without a relay event. But if we were to scroll down to the rain gauge, you'll notice that there's a whole load of rain, which is affecting the soil moisture, and therefore we're not irrigating during that period. Okay, so there we have a successful control implementation. Uh, there's two further properties I'd like to bring your attention to. So if we stop irrigation, sorry, stop logging, delete the records and go to the program window. Below active and deactive property categories, there are two more categories called safety conditions and record while active. Safety conditions basically provide you with a means to define fail safes for your system. So if a sensor were to break or you were to cut the cable of a sensor, it's obviously going to give an out of range reading. And we don't know what that's going to do with the control. So just to be sure, we can define a sensible mac maximum and minimum active and rest period. So, for example, we could say, we don't want this to irrigate for more than an hour at any one time. And between activations, between irrigations, there needs to be a minimum of one hour rest period. So it's not permanently on. And then the category below that, record while active, provides a means to record a, a measurement specifically during the period that the control is active. So this allows us to have a look, for example, at the waterfront moving through the soil, which could be of interest. And the way we would do that is we'd select a measurement, in this case, average soil moisture. And we say we want to record that at an increased rate. 
to the standard individual readings. So now we will get an average SM150 reading once a second while the control is active. But let's say we wanted to extend that beyond the activation because it takes a little while for the waterfront to travel through the ground. We want to extend it by 20 minutes. So let's apply that and have a look at the effect on the data. So again, I'm going to reset the, or restart the logger, the simulator. Start simulating. Increase the rate, run it through to about November. There we go. So let's go and have a look at the data. Okay, so the data looks pretty similar, but if we were to zoom into one of these irrigation periods, we will notice, zooming a little more, that under average soil moisture, where everything else has been recorded once an hour, average soil moisture, we got a reading once a second, and you can see the effect on the, on the soil moisture as it increases during that irrigation period. So let's see what the period says. So this is now run for an hour and it's been deactivated. Even though soil moisture is only 31%. And if you remember, we said our deactivate condition should be, is the average soil moisture above 32%. So what is happening here is that our safety condition is kicking in saying we've irrigated for an hour. I know you want to continue, but this has been defined as a safety condition. So I need to turn off the relay. And that's exactly what's happened over here. By defining those um, safety conditions, they automatically be appear on the front screen over here and allow you to edit them while the logger is actually logging, which is quite a useful feature. One further enhancement to this program is to make the thresholds for the soil moisture irrigation settable and make them visible over here for you to adjust. To find out more about how to do that, have a look at the tutorial on variables and relays. So that concludes this tutorial. I hope you found it interesting. And uh, please have a look at the following tutorials for more information on alarms, scripts, variables and outputs. Thank you for your time and please visit our website at www.deltat.co.uk.